I can't believe we're actually back for Demon Slayer Season 3. Season 2 ended on such a high note. Yes, all characters survived, but entertainment did not. Entertainment will never be the same again. Oh, we're picking up right where we left off. Most epic end of season hug ever. Such a big deal. Yep, it's a glimmer of hope. Yes, but it's a double-edged sword. Yeah, this is gonna also wake up M Muzan, Muzan, aka Michael Jackson. What is this, Infinity House? It's a little bit of a recap for end of season two, seems. Uh, what's his name? Got summoned. The most hated demon of all time. Never forgive, never forget. We must feel pain. Hope he gets torn to pieces by a fire sword. Akaza, right? The layout of this house seems just way overly elaborate. Surely there's a... Okay, never mind. Don't like you. Don't like you. I hope his death is the most painful of all. I'm watching the right thing, right? Is this, an, this I'm confused, because based on Mugen Train, this show has done movies only to do them in seasons. Is this a movie? Am I on the right track here? This show is always so damn cinematic, it's hard to tell. Very complex. <laughs> Surely there was a simpler way. God, this character just makes my, makes my skin crawl. Demon Slayer, Kimetsu no Yaba, Swordsmith Village Arc. No, thank you. Looks like they're all getting assembled. Upper four Han Tengu, and they're a very eccentric lot. What's his quirk? Prime numbers? Stop doing that. <laughs> Upper two. This is such a crazy preview and it's making me realize how much show there is in front of us. I guess we're gonna watch these people fall one by one. I find his appearance irritating. Upper one Kokushiba, wait a minute. Whoa, hold on a second. Hold on a second. He looks very familiar. Wait, wait, hold on a second. That can't be, right? That guy looked a hell of a lot. Like a certain other red-haired, flame-wielding protagonist. Set your dad issues ablaze? That's an interesting comment. Because one thing I was thinking at the end of season two was that Yutaro and Daki were there as parallels for Tanjiro and Nezuko. But it's kind of unclear to me what direction that'll take like it could be a warning it could just be a reinforcement of what is right about their outlook specifically tanjiro's outlook it also could be foreshadowing of danger for nezuko as she continues to get more powerful as well as continues to be more tempted by her demon side muzan is saying that daki was his weakness and you can imagine that's the case for Tanjiro as well in a certain sense, definitely logistically, you know, having to keep her in a box, carry her around, prevent her from doing any damage, or their shared bond, if they manage to overcome the obstacles, could be their greatest strength. It remains to be seen. One thing that always strikes me about the demons is like, there, there's no real allegiance of any kind, or there's no real goodness there. It, it all is kind of like fear, manipulation, thirst for power. League of Villains, they are not. Muzan just has this palpable contempt for all of them. <laughs> And he makes that very clear. How deep does the dark side go? Because up to this point, I mean, it gives them an extreme physical advantage, power advantage. I swear, this show has some of the most creative shots. I, I don't even know how to explain it. It's like beyond what I can understand. Beautiful as ever. One of his soldiers fails once in a hundred years and he can't, he can't tolerate it. あらゆる変化はほとんどの場合劣化だ。衰えなのだ。私が好きなものは不変。完璧な状態で永遠に変わらないこと。Interesting. I feel like I got to keep that in mind. It's like a crucial character detail. 113年ぶりに上限を殺されて、私は深いのです。Yeah, right, right. This is the danger of their their victory. This is the the shadow of their triumph. Dude is Pissed off. This is <laughs> Muzan's leniency. 
I don't know. I feel like there's a lot to exploit among these demons. Tanjiro might be the one for it. Some of them do have some some humanity. Not him. Not not this thing. This is such a chaotic meeting, but I guess establishing this character's power, who's definitely not Tanjiro's dad. They're also miserable. Just miserable demons, I guess that's obvious. That's not the face I expected. What happened to him? What happened to him? Bye. <laughs> Thanks for coming. I wonder if Tanjiro knows anything that is just not coming up, like a memory that's buried. I wonder if he was involved in any way. He has memories of his father, right? I don't know how this show manages to, to do this so consistently. How do they make these demons so irritating? As villains, I swear, they're some of the most irritating I've ever seen. Like, I just hate them. I, I just hate them. I mean, there's different categories of the hate. My hate for Akaze is personal, for what he did to Rengoku. The others are just, just slimy. They're just so slimy and gross and creepy. And it bothers me that they're so powerful. It just feels like something's wrong. It's an injustice. It's a universe out of balance. Bye. Bye. Take them all. <laughs> please take them. Be well, lady. Please, please remove them. I want to see Tanjiro. Obviously, we followed him. We made the jump with him. He's getting a lot of coverage. Maybe he's the demon. The demon, this arc. Maybe I wanted to wait too long for his death. Wait, what? I'm so confused what's going on right now. What? That's not Tan Tanjiro. That's what? That's not Tanjiro. That's Tanjiro. Tanjiro with a baby. Sells charcoal check. That's... Nezuko, faux Nezuko. He's getting this through like a dream or flashback. What in the world did I just watch? I don't know. It seems a, a little bit too deliberate for a dream. I'm as confused as you are, Tanjiro. Two months have passed. Yeah, I mean, all their organs got rearranged, so they got up real easy. Hold on, I need a minute to process what I just watched. What is this alternative universe that he saw? I mean, there's a possibility that it is just a dream with meaning and isn't actually a flashback of, of any kind or a memory. But it, it looks like Tanjiro is not the first Tanjiro. But as confusing as that was, I think that did clear up a little bit or give hints for something I was just asking, which is what led Tanjiro's father, which who knows who he is or what his relationship is now, into demonhood. He was seeking something, something he felt he was supposed to do but couldn't, a failure that weighs on him, searching for a name. How are boys doing though? Where's Inosuke? Where's Zenitsu? Did Inosuke's organs ever return, or heart, return to its original location? Episode 1, Someone's Dream. That just opened up a whole can of worms. I don't know what to think about that. Right, showing up at the last minute. After everything was over. Yeah, it was partly because of that event that they're so close. They went through, went to hell and back. All on the same page to do the impossible. For sure. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's an odd duck. But we love him. We love him around here. That is great news. Right. I don't know. I don't think you watch Demon Slayers. Demon Slayer female characters don't really make a lot of noise. Oh yeah, I forgot about the Tanjiro fan club. Damn. Put him right to work. Yeah, why would he ever leave the, the demon core? What does he have to live for except for his three hot wives? <laughs> and a lifetime of pleasure. Something tells me he'll be alright. 
That is a that is a great comparison. He is a honey badger. At this point, I'm willing to believe that. This time it's sleep. This time he's probably just relieved. He's smiling now, yeah. I don't know, there's nothing like a nice sleep after you feel accomplished. After you feel like you've done something great, you know? Like a journey ends, and you're kind of basking in it. Those are the best times to sleep. Best sleep. Just lifted up everyone's spirits immediately. What I also want to see, okay, so like I was saying that the danger of that victory was waking Muzan up kind of from his stasis of just being on top of everything, being super capable, having no threats. That's pretty terrifying. The other side of that you hope is that it rallies the Hashira. So I really would love to see their reaction. I also can't wait to see this this brotherhood, this trio, develop further. If there's ever any doubt about their bond, it's gone now. But has he been doing deep breathing? And this is where the, <laughs> the real danger begins, when this sword guy shows up. Definitely wrote some angry letters. Yeah, there it is. Better pick up a new weapon art. Swordsman Village. This will be your most difficult mission yet. It pains me a little bit, speaking of the, the trio, the friendship, that they're split up. I think one of the biggest points of catharsis for me in season two was them being together and their gr growing bond and the fact that they managed to overcome this unreal threat. Like them hugging it out was one of the best moments of the show. But I guess it could be interesting if they have separate journeys. We'll see. By the way, where is Nezuko? <laughs> Just in her box. Also, does this not earn, earn us a place in the Hashira? It's like a Russian doll of back hairing. At least we got to see Nezuko's box. If you think that's cool, wait till you see the Infinity Palace. Whoops, <laughs> overdid it. Did it a little bit there, maybe. Is that what that feeling is? They just double down. <laughs> they double down with the <laughs> the mid card too. The sweets your grandma gives you. He's being polite. Delicious candy packaged in 1952. It's got all the flavor of the Second World War. He resigned. <laughs> Oh, that's ominous. Tanjiro drove him into a midlife and career crisis. Or maybe there's something else going on. Not exactly comforted by this repeated punching motion. And Tanjiro immediately decided it was his responsibility, as he does. This is the Tanjiro who can't make it 100 meters without doing an errand for someone. He's the ultimate NPC taker, NPC mission taker. And it looks like there's a Hashira waiting. A very scantily clad or not clad at all Hashira. There she is. You, sh you shut up. <laughs> shut up. So, so pure hearted. So pure hearted. She's probably not used to being ignored. Speak for yourself. And cured. <laughs> it's not paella, paella, canela, whatever that dessert was, but it'll do. What the Damn, those reflexes, though. Is it so much, someone threw a tooth? Who throws a tooth? Oh, yeah, this guy. Did he lose his tooth from the love hajira? There she is. She makes an appearance. Hey, she's awake. She's alive. She's out of her box. 
Why do the Hashira seem so like loosely affiliated and not cohesive? Seems like a major weakness in this time of absolute peril. I can't wait to see her in action. I bet she's an absolute beast. It's a quest for love. Makes sense. That narrows it down to like five people in the world. Yeah, he should be an absolute like legend and hero among them. It doesn't seem like anyone really showed up for him, although I guess they're all busy on missions because they just have back to back to back missions all the time. Humble as always. He was such a key part of it. Got a lot to do before then. So many irritating demons in the way. She certainly has a way. Yep, I'm with you, Tanjiro. Yep, 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 yep. I felt that in my ears. That came through in the headphones. How do you focus after a moment like that? How do you focus on breathing? This is like the eighth eating scene in this episode. At least he's not dropping food anymore. I'm gonna ditch you again, maybe. What is she talking about? She could have been a little bit more specific. Oh, he actually is not ditching her this time. Oh, that's sweet. Is this character growth? No. The way she said it was it was so cryptic. Power of love. Or just extreme lust. Isn't he, uh, Miss Hashira? Feels like something bigger is going on. Could it be a coincidence that they're all just here for swords? Oh, oh, what the hell? Oh, he's here. That's a demon. That's a, your father and a demon and all, I don't know, other things. Yeah, you, yeah. Or have you? I'm so confused by the, the opening dream sequence. Wow, there's so many questions have been raised. Is this the opening of season three? Looks like it, looks like it. Oh, cool, she's gonna be really prominently featured. That's awesome. Yeah, she was one of the Hashira I was most intrigued with when I, when I first got introduced to them. Miss Hashira also, another sword broken. I saw Rengoku in there, and my heart was immediately set ablaze. Yeah, well, I guess the arc is, is called the Swordsmith Village, so conceivably this is where it's going to take place, and it seems to be guarding a lot of secrets. I wonder how it's going to go down. I'm actually shocked that the Rengoku father, uh, Rengoku, the Tanjiro father lookalike is just here already. Okay, there we go, we got the cast. Doesn't seem like a lot of Zenitsu or Inosuke in there. Could be they're, they're taking it break sitting out this season. That's the kind of thing that doesn't matter if you're binge watching a show, right? But you you feel if you're watching weekly. That means it's possibly a long time since we get that that trio again. Oh yeah, I, I totally forgot about these. I don't know notice. And we're back. <laughs> we're back with the Demon Slayer. Just hitting me with all that Demon Slayer energy. Obviously, it looks beautiful. We didn't really get any fight scenes. This episode was largely set up and quite the setup. As I said, that flashback dream, whatever it was sequence was bizarre. And perhaps something about it is connected to this village. Things I'm most excited for this season, seeing Muzan's response, if we get that at all. Obviously this intriguing character who looks just like what I imagined Tanjiro's father to be. The love Hashira. Miss Hashira also seemed cool to me when I first was introduced to him. And obviously seeing what this arc is about and what it means for Tanjiro as a character.